Budoucnost energetiky je o levné, dostupné, obnovitelné energii a bude to brzká budoucnost. V řádu jednotek let se budou dít zásadní změny a my si povíme například těch zásadních změn v Holandsku, kde během čtyř let došlo k obrovskému nárůstu využití obnovitelných zdrojů energie a to sebou přináší potřebu také tu energii ukládat a chytře ji zase z těch úložišť do sítě dodávat v špičkách. A za mnou je největší parkoviště, které je připraveno na, na obou strané nabíjení a vydávání energie z elektromobilů na světě. Behind us there's the biggest bidirectional charging plaza in the world. Uh, could you describe it for the audience and uh, what was your role on the project? Yes, sure. Um, yeah, my name is Lauren Berg. I'm director of a company called We Drive Solar. Uh, we work closely together with companies and the city to make Utrecht the first bi-directional city in the world. Utrecht really wants to be in the forefront of the energy transition with enabling electric mobility, but also with bringing batteries not just to drive, but also to help in the energy transition. So we work closely together with the city, but also with companies to really roll out this technology and show what it can do. Um, and as Air Company was one of the first to come to us and say, okay, we want to be a part of this mission and we have to install chargers, we want to install solar on our parking plaza, can we make that bi-directional? So we made an offer for them and they said yes. And now behind me you can see uh, a, a huge charging plaza, which you see more and more in this country and all over the world, but this one is bi-directional. So all the charging stations you see can do bi-directional charging in the future. Mm -hmm. Technically, could you describe the building, how much uh, photovoltaics is being installed and how many charges are there? Yeah, so the first thing ASR uh, insurance company did was install 800 kilowatt of uh, solar. Uh, so they built a whole new uh, uh, infrastructure for that. Um, and then we installed uh, 350 charging points. Um, and that's basically uh, almost now like half of the parking pla places already have a charger and the rest is already prepared to have a charger. So we can scale it up to uh, uh, almost 600. Um, and all the chargers are ready for bidirectional charging. So as uh, all the cars become electric, that will happen in the near future. And then a few years later, uh, all the cars will come, become bidirectional. Then they can uh, use the charging plaza, not just for charging, but also as a storage for the building and also for the city. Mm -hmm. Uh, when the cars come in the morning, yeah. when the people come to work here, yeah. uh, how the charging works that it, there's no uh, blackout in the building? So basically now, um, when you look at normal charging, um, we, we look really at the peaks. When are the peaks uh, in the building? When are the peaks in the grid? So in the morning, when there's a lot of energy being used by buildings starting up their, their systems and heating um, and the cars come in, the charging is at a really low level. Um, and then during the middle of the day when there's a lot of sun and the, there's a, a, a dip in the energy usage, um, the charging of the cars is, is at its highest level. Um, and when you have this charging available, then you discharge your car in the morning and maybe even some before you leave uh, for home um, to really help also lower the peaks and to really help uh, renewables to not be only available during the middle of the day but also in the morning and in the evening. And that's where the, the cars come in. The bidirectional charging becomes handy. Uh, when we talk about bidirectional charging, we have to say that as of now, early 2024, yeah. very few electric vehicles are ready for the V equal to grid protocol, right? That's right. Yeah. So uh, what are the pilot, pilot projects? So basically in 2019, we started with Renault. They uh, changed Renault Zoe for, for us to be able to test this technology and also to develop our charger. Um, Last year, in 2022 and 2023, we did a project together with Hyundai. Uh, the Ionic 5 from Hyundai is fr by production already uh, V2G ready, um, but the software is not there yet. So um, we got access to the software. So we got 25 Ionic 5s, uh, one of them is also here, uh, to be able to test it at the larger scale. And this really showed us the, the possibilities of this technology and really 
made very clear that if you scale it up even further, then it has the potential to really help the energy transition in a massive way. Um, as you can see, the amount of storage you have available in these batteries and cars. Um, so this year, we've seen more and more car makers bringing V2G to the market, to the end users. So Kia with the EV9, Hyundai with the Ioniq 7 and also other cars in, in planning. Uh, Renault with the Renault 5, Tesla with the Cybertruck, uh, Volkswagen with the uh, ID4. More and more car makers are now coming to market with, with finally V2G for end, end users. And we are in talks with them to make a large deployment of cars available for the Utrecht project. Um, and that's going to happen at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be uh, primarily uh, car sharing companies or car sharing company who will participate on the yes. pilot? Yes, we work together with uh, the largest car share company in the Netherlands, MyWheels. They have 3,000 cars in operation uh, all over the country. Uh, 2,000 of them are already electric. Um, and in Utrecht we are going to roll out with them the first deployment of bidirectional cars in, a, in their fleet. So. Um, their char cars will be on our chargers all over the city, uh, also here. Um, and more and more of these cars will become bidirectional. Uh, and we will, together with them, provide um, energy systems, uh, energy services to the grid operator, but also to uh, the buildings like this and to the city. Mm -hmm. How complex is the, let's say, the software solution, that, that, that management of such an ecosystem? Well. We already are developing that for multiple years. Um, next to this one, we also have like 400 chargers in public space uh, all over the city. And at all of these chargers, we already do smart charging. So we look at the energy prices, and when the prices are high, we lower the, the, the level of charging. And the, when the prices are low, or there are a lot of renewables on the grid, then we set the charging to the highest level. So for example, last night, I mean, you can hear the wind. Uh, last night we had like negative energy prices. Because uh, there was so much wind power. Yeah, so there's so the much north. energy coming into the Dutch grid already. And now the sun is shining. So the prices are now also very low, even in January already. Um, so when the prices are low, we put the pricing at the charging at the highest level. And this system already works. We have that activated on all of our chargers uh, in Utrecht today. So if you add bidirectional charging to that, you put an extra benefit in. So when the prices are high, we start to discharge the car and deliver power back to the grid when there's a huge demand. And when the prices are uh, low, then you have extra capacity in your battery to charge. So you make extra money with the low energy prices. So bidirectional charging combined with this huge amount of renewable energy available now really can be interesting for you as a car owner, but also for you as a, a company with a charging plaza like this or as a city uh, with, with grid congestion. Uh, will you cooperate with like a data connection on a real-time basis with the grid uh, operators? Because it's the fact that one hour the price is high doesn't mean that there can be minutes or you know that much lower yeah. um, um, time where they actually have uh, a need for either electricity to come to the grid yes. or being consumed. Well, it's, it's, it's not flexibility, yeah. right? So, the so we have a connection with all of our chargers with the grid operator. Um, and basically what we do is um, like you have the, the energy prices are like 24 hours before they are known. And also grid congestion can be predicted at the same time. So 24 hours before we make the charging profiles, um, we get the, the, the energy prices information and the grid information, and then we can decide, okay, this is the best time to charge, this is the best time to discharge in the next day. So it's not a real life connection, but it's real time based on the data we got uh, the day before. And that works really nice. So we can basically help the grid operator get the best prices for charging and discharging, help renewable energies from the grid, and provide renewable energies back to the grid at night when there's no sun or wind available. What about the service level uh, towards the customer, towards the EV owner? If yeah. uh, 
uh, somebody actually do, does need uh, like a full power charging, yeah. is that an option? Because there, there, there could be a time where yeah. you actually lower yeah. uh, the, the, the yes. output. Yes, so with the car sharing program, we connect our charging profiles with the data from the car sharing. So we know when a next trip is planned. So we can exactly charge and discharge the battery up until the moment that the trip has to be made and then the battery will be 100% full. With a charging plaza like this or on the streets in Utrecht with, with cars from everyone, you of course have to be a bit more careful. Um, I mean, an average trip in the Netherlands is 75 kilometers, so you can do that with like 20% of your battery. So you still have quite a lot of space you can play with. But if someone needs a full battery, um, then people can say via a QR code on our charging station, don't uh, do bidirectional charging with my car, just charge it. I need 100% full battery. Um, and, but we also learned by doing smart charging that you can, even if you don't know the driver and, and the, the exact time of departure, you can do quite advanced smart charging and even bidirectional charging uh, with a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. You are a uh, provider, contractor of uh, public uh, charging for the city of Utrecht, right? Yes. Well, when did you got the contract and for how long and how does it work? The city of Utrecht does like tenders for public charging infrastructure and we won a tender in 2019 and so we got a contract to install 400 uh, public chargers um, and we have to uh, control them up until the end of this decade. Um, but more and more of these chargers are now becoming chargers for uh, shared vehicles. So they're not public anymore, they're just for my wheels cars, the car share company. And, with these, and that's also where we're going to deploy the bi-directional cars first, to really learn at a large scale how bi-directional charging for a city really can help the city to um, solve grid congestion, which is really an urgent issue. I think Matthijs uh, uh, told you about that. Uh, it's 400 or 4,000? 4, 400 chargers with 800 uh, plugs. At the same time, there's 2,000 um, ball boxes, right, with, with uh, 4,000 plugs. And so there are other operators yes. within Utrecht yeah. at the yeah, same time. Are, currently, there are like three operators active. Yeah. And, but there's uh, uh, for the users, yeah. they would just need one card, yeah. one, one chip. Yeah, you can charge everywhere. It's interoperable. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Tell me, uh, Holland used to be among the laggards uh, in uh, the adoption of renewable energies, yeah. but it completely changed over the past four years or yeah. so. What happened? So basically, um, we had our own like natural gas reserve in the north of this country. Um, but then more and more earthquakes happened there and there was a lot of pushback to stop using that because the houses were collapsing. Um, and at the same time, there are like clear goals from the U European uh, Union to set and go to renewable energy. Um, so, but suddenly there was an urgency to make that happen um, because of those earthquakes. So. Uh, and on top of that, the energy crisis in Europe and high energy prices also really helped. So in the last few years, like everyone started to install solar panels on their own roofs. Companies, private house owners, um, new housing projects everywhere. Um, so from being one of the last countries in Europe, we now are number one in terms of solar, not just in Europe, but in the world. We have the most solar panels per inhabitant in the world. And at the same time, we are building massive uh, wind energy, not just on land, but mostly also on sea. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, wind at the North Sea, and uh, together with UK and uh, Denmark and Germany and uh, Norway, a massive amount of wind energy is planned there to provide energy to all of these countries. Uh, so our country within, I think, the end of the decade or a bit later will be powered mainly with wind and solar. Um, and that's quite remarkable for a country that's way up north <laughs> in Europe. So we are not, uh, we don't have that much sun. But uh, even already, like on country, uh, days like today, um, like half or even more of our energy is coming from the sun. And that's January. 
and, and, and it's yeah. a short day exactly so that's that's like massive and so if you look at like only like the first half of 2023 we installed only on households uh, on houses two and a half gigawatt of solar just in one half year so with the right incentives and the right mindset people just install it and it, it's, it's like massive, the, the impact is like massive. Now, uh, we are also very uh, fossil-loving and um, uh, nuclear-loving country. Yeah. And uh, we only produced, I think in 2022, like 6% of our consumption came from yeah. renewables. And so we have a lot of work to do ahead of us. Uh, we're very slow. Um, and also the legislation, because we have such... Um, uh, such a massive, uh, basically, lobby against it that yeah. the legislation is also slow yeah. in the country. One of the key reasons w what is being mentioned in our media, right, uh, as uh, part of the push against is that, oh, this will bring, the renewables will bring enormous challenges for the grid and there yeah. will be blackouts. Yeah. Now, so you are so fast in adopting it. How do you cope with the, with the stability of the grid? Well, so basically, um, there's there's really not a fear of blackouts. It's more like a fear of we have too much energy. <laughs> and so, th th the main reason why this this grows so fast was just also simple economics. It's the cheapest form of, of electricity. And yes, solar is only available when the sun shines, but batteries are becoming available like in massive amounts everywhere. And battery, batteries plus solar or batteries plus wind are already the cheapest solution. So you can install a battery if you're afraid of blackouts. You can buy an electric car or a, or a bi-directional electric car if you're afraid of blackouts and problem solved. And if you look at that at a national level, yes, the grid operator has challenges with this enormous amount of renewables coming onto the grid. And they have to invest in that. And it's a massive investment. Yes, they have to do that. And they also have to connect between other countries. So if it's windy in, in Norway, it can come here, or if it's sunny over here, it can go to the UK. So a lot of these connections are being built and that's also necessary to balance the grid on a larger level. Um, but it's not a challenge you can't overcome. I mean, yes, to have, you have to invest in that also on a country level. I mean, China is investing, I think, 80 billion in grid investments. So that's the skill you have to think about when doing that. But then you have abundant, cheap, clean energy. Okay, I think that's attractive. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you can now already see after the energy crisis, with every gigawatt of renewable energy installed in the Netherlands, the average price of energy is going down with 0 0.1 cents. So with every 10 gigawatts, that's like one cent going down going down, going down. And that's what renewables do. They bring the energy costs down and that will help the economy, it will help households, it will make us independent of Putin and other uh, people you don't want to be independent, dependent on. So, um, yeah. It's exactly the opposite what uh, the uh, what's the general theme in, in Czech media that the energy prices will go up. They will not the more renewable energies we have, the cheaper the energy will be, especially in summer, yeah. during the day, the energy, energy will be free of charge or uh, it will be yeah, minus. Exactly. I mean, I charged my car this night for zero euro. Zero. And I can drive 600 kilometers for zero euro. You are never able to be do that with a fossil fuel car. Never. 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 So this is, and this is, I mean, it's January, it's windy, yes. Um, and in a few months there there's so much sun i mean th this is an, inter an interesting figure i'm going to tell you right now so in 2022 as a country we had 35 hours with energy prices of zero of, or lower 35 last year 2023 we had 500 this year it will be more than a thousand hours that's like already more than 10 percent of the hours we will have free energy in this country negative prices yes and that's the abundant free energy yes. and there will be more and more and, yeah, and you we can keep do installing and keep installing more it's, it's growing every i mean i didn't 
imagine it would grow, it would be able to grow so fast. And I mean, you can see it in uh, in Germany as well. I mean, it sometimes they build a lot, some sometimes a year a, a bit less, but then it takes off again. And I mean, the prices of solar are now so low, nothing can compete with that. Uh, can, can, can we go back to the topic of bidirectional charging? It, it, could we think of uh, uh, illustrating on on whatever one car, ten cars, hundred cars, what could it actually could do for the stabilizing the, the grid? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we started with bidirectional charging because we already saw that this was going to happen in the Netherlands and everywhere around the, the world. The huge uptake of the exactly. uh, yes. renewables. Yes, and we said, okay, that's nice that this, the, the energy will be clean, but there, there is this problem of, of uh, producing it and, and, and needing it. So what are the best forms for storage? And you have season storage, but the, the re, the, what we focused on was really the, the short-term storage. So during the day, maybe during the week. And then batteries are by far the best solution for that. And then if you zoom out and you look where are the batteries produced for and where are they going, it's like 90% is going to cars. So all the huge battery factories in the world and more and more of them are being built, it's most of it is going to cars. So we really looked, okay, if there's the batteries and the cars are already all, all over the place, why not use them in a smarter way? So together with the University of Utrecht, we calculated that with 10,000 cars, bidirectional, you can balance most of the grid in a city like Utrecht. So that's less than 10% of the cars you need. Bidirectional, you can balance the whole city. You can provide clean energy 24 hours a day to all the people living in Utrecht. So that is quite a... I mean, doable number, it's not something that's impossible. Yeah. Um, if you scale it up to the Netherlands, we are quite an energy intensive uh, uh, country. You need like one to one and a half million cars to provide enough battery storage to solve all grid problems and to be like 100% renewable based on solar and wind and maybe some other uh, uh, sources. Um, and there are like more than Eight million cars in this country. So that's like 15 to 20 percent of the cars needed to provide enough storage for the whole country. And that's, I think, our future. Tak to byl velice inspirativní příběh z Holandska, z Utrechtu. Já moc krát děkuji velvyslanectví Nizozemského království za to, že podpořilo tvorbu tohoto videa a že mne pozvalo do Nizozemí. A 17. a 18. dubna pořádá velvyslanectví obchodní misi do Holandska, kde se budete moci setkat, pokud jste jako firma v oblasti obnovitelných zdrojů energie nebo elektromobilů, tak se budete moci setkat se společnosti, jako je například We Drive Solar a potenciálně navazovat obchodní partnerství i pro Českou republiku. Jsem Jan Staněk a od roku 2019 se snažím inspirovat milion lidí k přechodu na elektromobil a čistou energii. Budu moc rád za vaše názory, otázky a komentáře k tomuto tématu dole pod videem. A prosím, podpořte mě jako nezávislého autora a staňte se odběratelem tohoto kanálu. Mějte krásný energický den.